The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, Joe, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Today we're uh, doing a CapEx, OpEx uh, modeling webinar. Uh, this was um, set up for the attendees of the SMRP conference. Um, just a few things before we get started. On the line, I have Joe Bellin, who heads up our technical support and also heads up training in North America. I do business development in North America. I would be the one that you guys probably met at the conference or didn't meet, given the number of people there. Uh, once we're finished, these recordings, I have them posted on the blog. There's um, quite a few recordings up there nowadays, so it's uh, kind of like small training sessions on specific topics. So please feel free to uh, go to our blog to see more information on our software products. Just a couple of side notes. The, um, let's see a pop out on the side of the screen. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the questions answer dialog. Um, don't raise your hand because I won't be checking the attendees. Uh, but we will be answering questions throughout the meeting. So if it's, if it's a question that's more specific, I'll just answer it individually. Um, if it's of interest, something that we might, I think might be of interest to the group, then uh, Joe will be pausing for questions throughout the meeting. Uh, just so we're all on the same page with CapEx and OpEx, CapEx is considered um, the funds that are used to purchase stuff, machinery, uh, new buildings, um, you know, replacement parts, things like that. Operating expenses are the costs to run those buildings, trucks, the, to run this capital expenditure. So the operating expenditures is the cat cost that it uh, covers to run the capital expenditures. Uh, the goal today, we'll, we'll understand how the um, CapEx effects OPEX, uh, understand how you can learn that by using different modeling types. Today we'll probably be sticking to mostly RBD and Weibull, maybe do some FMEA, which would be um, RCM type studies. Um, show you the pieces of data you need to properly calculate, not only your CapEx, but the OPEX that will go with it and to decide when your operation of expenses reach a point at, at which you should replace the components. So when the operational expend, expenditures will kind of bleed into the capital expenditures because something should be replaced instead of maintained because the maintenance cost has surpassed the cost of replacing that piece of equipment. Um, we'll be in mainly our well, we'll be only in our availability workbench today. The reliability block diagram software will be the AVSIM. AVSIM includes Weibull. RCM costs will be the FMEA hierarchy that also includes Weibull. Um, these are some other components in the availability workbench. Like if you want bits of data, you can pull it out of SAP, Maxima, or Ellipse. Um, things like that, but we will not be touching on that today. If you have questions on that, please contact me after the meeting. Um, just to support the, how we offer support on our product. But um, let me pass controls over to Joe Bellin. He'll be doing the majority of the presentation from here. Okay, hi. Um, Jeremy, can you see my screen now? Yep, I can see it. Sure. So I have the availability workbench open. And as Jeremy mentioned, we're going to be going through uh, how we can use this to, to figure out both our CapEx and OpEx, and figure out, uh, uh, sort of balance these two against each other. Uh, the, the main uh, goal or the main uh, point here is that you often have a choice on how to uh, spend money. You could spend um, money on capital expenditures now 
and hopefully save money on operational expenditures down the road if it's if it's to, if the capital expenditures are to improve the reliability of the system or you can save money now on the capital expenditures uh, with maybe a higher operational expenditure down the road so we'll be looking at um, a lot of the, the focus on the software will be looking at balancing these two what we're trying to do is figure out how to quantify these and quantify our business decisions which one of these business decisions is going to save us the most money is it, is it more worthwhile to uh, spend more money now or uh, on you know, make a, a big expensive purchase on redesigning or adding new equipment to the system or uh, to um, save that money for later for maintenance and, and things like that on our current system so I'm just going to present a few examples of that and sort of uh, familiarize you with how we would accomplish that sort of thing with an availability workbench. What different uh, options we can change and input in order to model different, um, you know, basically in order to tweak the system to model different possible scenarios, how we can track these costs associated with those scenarios. So this CapEx OpEx trade-off is a balancing act. You're balancing capital expenditures versus op uh, operational expenditures. Changing one can have an influence on changing the other. Um, and with all things balancing, we're trying to find that low point, the uh, the, the point where we're where we're we're minimizing the cost uh, overall. So one example of that, I'm just going to just mention this briefly, where we often see this is with the uh, planned maintenance optimization. That's kind of an example of it. We can either spend more now on uh, maintenance, uh, purchasing spare parts and putting them into service, or we could wait for the component to fail and then just fix it as it fails, and that would be our operational expenditures. I'm not going to go through the um, the maintenance optimizations of our same cost. We've done that in other uh, web demos, um, but I'll just give that as sort of our starting example, and we've uh, seen that using the FMEA with an RCM cost. We've seen that optimization plot. On the left-hand side, we're seeing sort of a high cost of CapEx, of purchasing spare parts to use for the maintenance. On the right-hand side, we are seeing a high OpEx cost of uh, failures and outages um, from the maintenance, uh, from the uh, um, uh, from not doing enough maintenance on the uh, system. And the low point is sort of our balancing act. Okay, I'm not going to go through that in in more detail. We've already covered this in, in other webinars. I think uh, uh, we can refer you to other links if you're interested more in that optimization. Let's talk a little bit more about some of these, um, how you can do some of these optimizations and balancing these costs, these CapEx costs versus OpEx costs. So to do that, I'm going to open up another example file. Let me see. It's um, going to take me just a second to find my file somewhere on my hard drive here. Okay. So this is an, an example file that one of my colleagues built. Let me zoom in on the diagram. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, you might have uh, remembered that I mentioned the new version. We have new scroll wheel support, so I'm trying to fill in the, in the diagram using the, the scroll wheel. Okay, so here's an example that one of my uh, colleagues built. It's a pump system that goes through, pumps uh, a, a fluid through a control valve. So we have our control valve here. And the, the someone's made the proposal, you know, we're having a lot of valve failures. I wonder if we could somehow improve that. Someone uh, looks into it and finds a more reliable valve that's also a lot more expensive. So now we have the question, is it more worthwhile to spend more money, a higher capital expenditure cost, on a valve that costs much more money, but could potentially give us more reliability, which means lower operational expenses associated with the downtime and the maintenance of the valve. So what we want to do is we want to make the business case for which of these, uh, these valves we should manage. So what I've done here is I've uh, defined my valve spare parts. The current valve we're using costs 15,000 um, units, uh, we'll assume dollars, although honestly it was uh, my, one of my English colleagues who built this, so maybe you can make pounds. And uh, using that valve, he's defined the failure rate of uh, mean time to failure of 175,200 hours uh, for this valve. So if we run the, uh, the analysis, I've already performed the simulations on the system, we get a particular uh, uh, overall total cost. There's costs on the downtime, that's the consequence costs, the uh, costs on the maintenance, the operational costs, the costs on the spare part purchase. Now this is sort of what we're looking at. We could spend more on spare part, uh, spare part purchase, and we want to know, does that going to have a, um, a commensurate decrease 
on the consequence costs and the operational costs by buying a more expensive spare part. So then I've created a second model. Let me, um, I have a second availability workbench window and I'll show that second module. Um, it's not in my recent projects, so let me find it again. And so we have, we've redone this, um, sorry about that. Let me uh, just zoom in once more, find the diagram. So I've redone it. Now it's the same structure. I haven't really changed much of anything. I've just made a simple, a couple of small simple changes to the model and then saved it as a new file. Let's show that. So what I've done is I've changed my valve component, changed the cost. So now this new valve we could purchase costs not quite twice as much, but it's a significantly higher capital expenditure cost. This one's $25,000. However, we've stipulated that this valve has a, has a much better reliability. So the failure on that valve, we said if we purchase this valve, our mean time to failure changes to 262,800 hours. So we get a better performance, a lower mean time to failure, but the valve costs more. So what we want to know is which of these scenarios is better. Is it better to have a higher capex cost on the valve or have a lower capex cost but then potentially a higher opex cost on the maintenance and the, and the uh, failure downtime. So again if I run the, you know, the results I get new results so I have a new spare purchase cost, consequence cost, operational cost, etc. Now it's a little bit difficult to see you know, unless you memorize those numbers from the first time around uh, which of these uh, scenarios came out better. I could pop open the two windows next to each other and compare them directly. Or I can use, let me uh, show one of the features of Availability Workbench, the uh, project comparison option that allows you to display a plot showing the comparison between the two projects. So let me show how to do that. Whenever I attach a file as a library, so I got a file attached library, I can choose um, any availability workbench project. So I have to find it again. Yeah, every time I do this, I have to find it. So I'll find my old valve project, attach it as a library. So this is the old valve, and this is the new valve scenario. When I have them both both attached, I get a, a uh, particular plot option. It's the project comparison plot, which will show a uh, the costs or allows me to compare costs of the various different projects. You know, my currently open project, the new valve, and then any attached library projects I have open. So this project comparison is comparing the, the costs of this project to the costs of any attached library projects. So I have a few different graph options. Right now I'm showing the uh, bar chart comparing the two. So we can see is that with the new valve system, I have much, much lower consequence costs. That's what the yellow bar represents as the consequence costs. It's hard to see, but the um, the spare purchase costs is is higher. There's a little green bar somewhere at the end, but you probably can't even see it. It's higher on the new valve system. Um, there it is. The, it's at the very, very beginning. It is a little bit higher, but it's so minutely higher that you don't really even notice it compared to the consequence costs. So this is uh, what this is telling us is that, yes, that new valve is worthwhile. The, the lower failure rates we get from that. Um, you know, the, uh, the increased reliability is well worth the purchasing price of that valve. So again, this, we can use this graph to, to display that. So, and use that to, to back up our, um, our business decisions. Okay, uh, Jeremy, were, uh, were there any questions or anything that you would want, wanted me to mention in regards to this example? Um, no, not yet. Okay. So this is just uh, one example of, of some of the changes we can make. We can compare the, um, we can make a change to the system and use the project comparison to uh, make, those, make those differences. In this case, what we're changing primarily was the failure rate and the cost, spare purchase cost. Now, so a lot of the other um, optimizations or, or um, uh, what if analysis involves this. You find a parameter, say, you know, if we could change something about our system, we could make it, uh, we could make a change to it. You know, if we, if we change this particular parameter, we can improve it. So this is one of the things that you could do is pick a uh, value, change that, and then uh, 
build a new file, or you know, make a, uh, save it as a new file, and then compare the results. One of the um, changes that you might want to make would be uh, adding in new equipment. So let me open up a new file for this one. Go back to my other instance of Availability Workbench and open some, I want my Valve Project 1. Okay, so let's take a look at this system and what this represents. In this system, I have three control valves as part of some um, mining or drilling example. I think it's a, um, uh, an oil drilling example. The, the uh, product is passed through three control valves. Each control valve can handle a maximum of 40%. So if a single control valve drops, we have a uh, we drop to 80% of our maximum capacity. So there's a slight drop in in capacity, and it'll, somewhere along the way, and of course there's a um, there's a, an associated loss with that. I have to find a consequence, which defines a cost per unit loss, and then a cost per unit loss below our our target production of 80%. So now somewhere along the way, someone will say, hey, you know what, if we added a fourth valve, maybe we add a backup valve so that when one of our main three main valves fails, we don't have any drop in productivity. We have a backup valve that can perfectly, um, or that can maintain throughput. It's only designed to, uh, to, to maintain the maximum throughput. And, but adding that valve to our system could presumably cost a lot of money. So we want to balance these two scenarios. So again, I've re already run the analysis and I've already have my total um, costs. So right now we're looking mainly at the uh, consequence cost, which is my big uh, um, cost in this model. We want to know, could we lower our consequence cost, that, that, that cost of, of um, reduced capacity, could we lower that uh, consequence cost by spending a whole lot on adding a new valve? So again, I've built, let me flip back to my other project. Um, do I have its well, project two? Here we go. So now I've redone my model, and I've added a fourth uh, control valve here, this one right here. Um, and this one is a another type of control valve. Maybe it's, we can uh, uh, save a little money, use a cheaper valve or something like that, although I don't think I've done that for this model. It's a lower capacity, but it's a standby block. It's, it's just going to sit there and stand by, and it only comes online when one of the other three control valves has failed. Then we can uh, use this fourth control valve to maintain capacity. However, installing this control valve has a cost associated with it. There's construction. So what I've done is I've created a new uh, failure model for it. And I've added a redesign cost. I specify that it will cost some amount of money. Here it looks like I've said a million dollars is what it's going to cost to add in this fourth control valve. So I've specified that redesign cost. You can also specify there's an ongoing cost rate for that, but most of the uh, ongoing cost rate for this valve would be accounted for through the, uh, through the maintenance tasks that are performed on it. Okay, so then again, I've added that and I've already run the simulations, and so I can check the results to see how it differs. Again, um, you might not, uh, unless you memorize the numbers from the first time around. What we're after here is uh, again the project comparison. I'm going to close up my library because I still had that uh, the uh, the other valve system open, and then I'll attach as a library my valve one project. Here, so here's the valve system one, the valve system two. I'll go back to my project comparison, and here the the bar charts are stacked. I can turn on the the chart stacking. This gives a little bit of better breakdown of the um, the cost by the different uh, comparisons. So we see valve system two has much lower consequence costs. But then it has this new bar, this redesign cost. But from here, it looks like the drop in the consequence cost more than makes up the, the difference in redesign cost. So let's uh, actually, we can take a look at how we can change some of those plot options. We can show a stacked plot as such. And there, that gives us a little bit better. So you can see that the yellow bar is much smaller, the pink bar is uh, the redesign cost is not quite as big. So again, this is telling us that adding in that uh, that fourth valve, that just that spare valve to maintain throughput in the event of one of the other three valves failures will end up saving us quite a lot of money. It just again, justifies our capital expenditure. Okay, Jeremy, uh, was there uh, a question on that on that example? Yeah, in the um, in this project comparison, what does operational costs cover? I mean, what's being calculated in operational costs? 
Sure, yeah, so operational cost refers to a specific field in the maintenance tasks. So if I open a maintenance task, um, let me go to the correct means. So there's this operational cost field that you can specify. This is any costs of the maintenance that are not accounted for, not captured by the resource costs or the outage costs uh, or consequence. So we specify costs associated with the resources, the spares and, and labor and equipment. We specify costs associated with the consequence, with the outage, but there might be a, additional costs or anything else, any other costs associated with the maintenance are put into this operational cost field. So that's showing up there in the, uh, the total operational costs. So mainly it's referring to the maintenance costs. So when you see it between these two, uh, it's not going to be that, we haven't really changed it between these two projects, so they both generally have the same operational costs. Um, this one ends up being a little bit higher, 2.296E5, there's 2.355E5, so it's a little bit higher, mainly that's the, due to the maintenance on the new fourth valve, that's another operational cost that has to be accounted for, so that fourth valve has, uh, increases our maintenance costs in addition to that redesign cost but the measure decrease in consequence cost far uh, more than makes up for it. So in the operational costs, although mm -hmm. the um, human resources are listed as components in that, are those separate from labor? So yeah, so the resources would be labor, the blue part, part and then the spares, which is the pink part. So again, um, they're very similar between the two uh, systems. I don't know how well the, the pop-up tool tips coming across, but if you hover over one of any part of the of the uh, plot, you get that little pop-up tool tip explaining what that part of the bar chart is for, the total consequence cost, and giving a value assigned to it. Again, depending on your screen resolution and the uh, quality of the, uh, the stream, you might not be able to read that text that well. But yeah, so the, re the uh, resource um, costs are counted for separately. The operational cost is in addition to any other um, maintenance costs in addition to the resources. Okay, thanks. Okay. One more um, example of um, uh, where we might ask for um, a difference or to, to make the business case for a capital expenditure versus um, uh, an operational expenditure is sometimes people ask uh, repair versus replace. Is it more cost effective when a failure occurs to buy a brand new component and put it into service? Or should we just patch up the current component and sort of limp along until whenever the planned replacement of that component would occur? So let me open up uh, an example that shows that. So again, I have a, oh actually, let me, let me show one more thing before I get to that. Keep that in the back of your mind. I forgot one, one more thing. For these two examples, this uh, Valve project, one, uh, there's uh, something I forgot to show on the uh, project comparison. Actually, no, it's not on the project comparison. I did a, another example for this one. I combined both of these into the same file because um, I'm sort of, uh, I was getting ahead of myself just a little bit. So let me go back to this example. Um, one of the questions we might ask in that CapEx versus OpEx is we could spend more money now or spend more money later. So we might ask at what point does it become cost effective? Um, if I spend more money now, obviously, I, you know, it, it's, it's, um, I'm in the hole to begin with. And then the plan is that I'll eventually make up that money by spending less in the future. You might ask, when do those paths cross? When will I have ended up saving money? How long does the system have to be in use before I save money? So I made a modification to this project, to this Valve project. I put both models in one file. And then uh, in order to, to do that uh, justification, I used the LCC, the lifecycle cost module, to compare the two scenarios to see when does the operational expenditure catch up to the um, capital expenditure. So system one is my, um, my, my current system where I have three valves and I've done the cost, the red line is the cost over time, the cumulative cost over time. So it's at a, at a steep increase because of my operational expenditures over time, I have more of them. Now system two is I could spend more now and start with a higher cost, but then it flattens the line, right? Because I have lower operational expenditures, there's lower um, uh, downtime, lower downtime associated with failure. 
So this graph here in the LCC module, I've just basically defined two cost nodes, two cost equations to model those two systems. And so the red versus green lines are showing me the corresponding slopes and intersections. So this is what I'm looking at here. So I can sort of eyeball it. The um, program is only calculating the values at each interval. It changed the number of profile intervals to get a little bit more, um, uh, a little more granularity or a little more um, precision on the graph. Uh, but it looks like it's somewhere, so this is year one, this is year two, this is year three. It looks like it's somewhere between year two and three, the lines cross and I'll end up, that's when I end up having, to, having saved money now, one thing to keep in mind is that here I've only just built in the um, straight up costs. Remember, Availability Workbench does have the ability to calculate uh, net present value calculations. For instance, I could spend more money now, but you know, with investments and inflation, all, all those things, um, um, money now is more valuable than money, that same amount of money in five years due to inflation. Um, so I haven't built in any net present value calculations into this model. But just as a reminder, that is possible with the, uh, the AVSIM, you can go to the NPV tab and apply NPV calculations and set the percent yield and the uh, escalation costs, the estimated inflation essentially of various different costs. Okay, I think that was what I had forgotten to, to demonstrate. And again, and again, it's just you can use the life cycle cost to get a little bit better precision on those graphs comparing the two systems. Um, Jerry, were there any questions on that before the next example? Uh, that looks good. Okay. Okay. So now let's go back. I'd started to introduce the repair versus replace scenario. So let me uh, let me talk about that. So suppose right now we're just um, okay, just repair here, and let me check the replace one. Okay, I'll start with the replace scenario. So this is back to that four valve system. Now when one of these valves fails, I have two options. I could put in a brand new valve or I could fix the current valve. And I wanna know which of those scenarios is um, more worthwhile. So this is the replace scenario. And the way I've determined that replace is all on the maintenance. If I go to my failure model Go to my corrective task. This is remember what happens after a failure. This is my replacement scenario. So I've said one of my resources requirements is a spare valve to, in order to perform that uh, replacement. Okay, now someone says, well, maybe, you know, since we have a planned replacement on this valve, every 8,000 hours we're replacing it anyway, maybe if it fails, we don't worry about the, um, you know, we don't, we don't worry about the, uh, what's the failure? Yeah, with the, the ADA, the characteristic life is 12,000 hours. We're replacing it before wear out, before its characteristic life anyway. So if it fails, maybe we don't need to replace it. Maybe we just fix the current valve and then um, and then just uh, keep on running in that valve until it's planned replacement, which is gonna be less than eight, you know, less than 8,000 hours later. So I've, again, defined a new version of this model. Let me uh, switch over, open up that new version. In this new version of the model, I've specified in the correct maintenance, I've removed that valve as a resource. And the other change about that, the difference between repair versus replace, is when you replace it, you um, reset its aging, the component age to zero. Since this component does use a Weibull distribution, um, let me back out of this. On the failure tab, we can see it uses a Weibull distribution with a beta of two, which means it's wearing out over time. So the advantage to replacing it is we set, we reset its age to zero. So it's gonna lower the failure rate. This beta value of two on the Weibull distribution means that as, the, it, as it ages, its failure rate goes up. So when we replace it, we, we reset its failure rate. Its failure rate's lower, it's more reliable and less likely to fail. If we simply repair it, repair the valve, don't replace it, after the repair, its failure rate is no better than it was prior to the repair. So that's what I've specified on the advanced tab of the corrective action. It's condition after repair is as good as old, meaning it's just as likely to fail. It has a higher failure rate than if it was a brand new failure. So this is really the trade-off here. We could spend money on a new valve, um, but make the valve more reliable, or we could save money, continue using the existing valve until the planned replacement, but we'd have a higher failure rate and a higher chance of failure. 
but this is what we want to balance out. So again, I've uh, done my already run my calculations. I'm going to do my project comparison. What is that library? Oh, the previous libraries I had attached. This is my repair scenario. So let me add in my replacement scenario. Go to my project plots, and it looks like the replacement actually has much higher costs. Um, we can see in the repair scenario the labor costs uh, are more, but the purchase costs are lower, unsurprisingly, because we're not replacing it. What really we're probably most interested in is the consequence costs. Those are far lower. And that's, the, that's the deciding factor in this model. I'll explain why this happened in this model. And one last thing is the operational costs are higher in the repair scenario because there's more failures, because after a failure occurs, we don't reset the component age, so it's more likely to fail again um, before it's planned replacement. So we're going to have experience more failures, but interestingly, the uh, consequence costs are lower. And let me explain why it ends up being that case. And it's this quirk of this particular system. The valve has a very long lead time. There's a logistic delay time of 24 hours on that valve, meaning when a failure occurs, we have an extra 24 hours of downtime waiting to get the valve before we can begin the repair. So in the replacement scenario, when a failure occurs, we have an extra 24 hours on the, on the maintenance task while we're waiting to get that replacement valve. So the, while we are making it more reliable, our, what we've done is we've increased the, um, the repair time. With the uh, repair scenario, we don't need to have that lead, long logistic lead time on the spare part. So we can get it patched up more quickly and back and running. Even though it's likely to fail again, you know, we can, we can fix up two, we can perform two of these uh, uh, repairs here in the time it takes to do one of the replacements simply because of the lead time on the spare part. That's why it, this uh, repair scenario ends up being a better, uh, better advantage. Keep in mind that logistic delay time does not apply to planned maintenance because it's assumed the planned maintenance would not begin until it, you, you can, if for a planned maintenance, you can order the spare part in advance. So you don't have to wait for it. You don't have additional um, um, repair time or maintenance time because you were able to plan for it, for it ahead of time and order the valve. So anyway, so it's an interesting quirk of this one that the repair ends up being a cheaper over cost just because we don't, we eliminate our lead times on our spare part, therefore get the system back up and running, and then just sort of limp along until our next plan maintenance, at which point then we, re then we have a, we can replace it and get it done a little more quickly because we don't have that logistic delay. Let me just show one more thing with a project comparison plot. Uh, one of the other options we have is the cumulative cost profile, which will show a breakdown so you can see how, it's, uh, how they compare. The blue is the, the blue bar is the valve repair, the red is the valve replacement. That's again per interval cost, so you can see how they, how they compare with each other over time. So it's the time the cost per interval, the cumulative cost per year, essentially this is over a 10 year lifetime. So there's one of the other project comparison you have is uh, not just showing the overall cost, but the, the cost breakdown over the life. You can see how the, um, that cost increases over life. Okay, Jeremy, were there any questions or any uh, anything you'd like to, me to explain on, on that example? No, I think, I, I think that looks pretty good, Joe. Okay. Okay, well, so what I have, uh, hope you've been able to take away from this is various different ways of comparing different scenarios. So the way that we, uh, AVSIM or, and uh, Availability Workbench generally can be used to do these different repair versus replace scenarios is that we can, uh, um, look at the, the model, say, if we changed this, what else could be changed? What other, um, um, you know, if we, if we redesigned it, we could have a lower failure rate. If we used the more re reliable spare parts, the failure rate would be better. We'd have fewer, um, you know, our maintenance costs would be cheaper. So we can do these what if configural changes, make some change, save it as a new project and use project comparison to justify our business expenses. I had one more example, I think, from using the RCM cost module, uh, but I don't think I really need to go through it. It was just sort of showing how we do this, all of this in RCM cost. Jeremy, would you like another example of showing the, um, the RCM cost process? Yeah, let's, do, let's do one more with the RCM. Sure. It's sort of a, um, it's doing the same thing that we did in sort of comparing the redesign costs. 
it's based on the um, on the, the example file that comes with the project. This is the one I started showing off at the very beginning. And I'll show just the, the general procedure for how we do this sort of um, um, what if um, improvements to the uh, um, to the system using RSIM costs. One of the ways in RSIM costs to figure out where you should fo focus or target your improvements is the contribution plot. The contribution plot shows a, a breakdown, the contribution of the cost for the top 20 causes within our RSIM cost system. In the default or in the example project that comes with the software, we see the highest one is the electric system, the elec1.a.1, which is this power surge leading to fuse blowing. And so the sort of the, the process that we can use in, in the RCM cost is we can say, we look at this and say, whoa, that's a high cost there. Let's see what we can do about that. In the plots here within at, within Availability Workbench, you can, you'll can you notice my cursor. I think the uh, cursor comes across. You'll notice the little hand icon, uh, like a hyperlink, because I can click on this bar. I click on this bar chart, it uh, pops open the cause properties dialog for that cause. Now I can see, I can sort of investigate, why is this one giving me such a high cost? Well, firstly is the, the, the effect. It has a large effect, a major loss of production, which has a high effect cost. Secondly, as it happens very frequently, 2,000 hours exponentially distributed. Since it is an exponential distribution, uh, that means there's not, that uh, plan maintenance is not gonna be very effective against it. Um, there isn't really a plan maintenance task that works against exponential distribution because exponential distribution is a constant failure rate. The failure rate doesn't change after the maintenance. So I might ask, well, what can we do to improve that? So in this particular scenario, maybe we can redesign it. Maybe there's some sort of redundancy or some, so this particular cause is a power surge. Maybe there's some equipment that we can add, a surge, uh, some surge suppressing equipment that we could add to it. So what we can do essentially is redesign, set a redesign cost, and let me show you, I have actually a separate model set up to show you what I did. So I can open up that uh, power surge leading to fuse blowing. What I did is I said there's a redesign cost. I can spend $100,000 capital expenditure to add uh, some sort of protection, some sort of safety or protection device to try and limit the power surge. And what that allowed me to do is when I said, okay, if I'm redesigning it, what I expect to, to gain from this is that the effect the major loss of production doesn't always occur. My, um, so the power surge still happens every 2,000 hours thereabouts, but it doesn't always cause the effect. The redundancy factor, or RF here, is the probability that the effect occurs given that this uh, failure mode has occurred. So the power surge occurs, but now I've specified that there's some protection equipment that the majority of the time, 95% of the time, will prevent the major loss of production from occurring. It, it's, it protects us against that power surge. So I've said that there's a, some, for $100,000, I can put this, uh, this uh, protective device into play that will lower the probability of the uh, loss of production occurring. I reran the analysis, and then I get this new contribution plot. And let's find elec1.a.1. Here it is right now. It used to be the top one, the top contributor. I can actually show the, the comparison of the contribution. Um, here, I'm gonna open the uh, original. So here's elec1.a.1 in the original scenario, the highest contributor by quite a bit. In the uh, second scenario, I'm gonna flip windows. This is my second uh, availability workbench window with my second file. Elec1.a.1 has moved all the way up to here. So it's now the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth biggest contributor down from first. And you can see its effect cost is much lower, but now we have this additional redesign cost built in. And then we can continue that process. So now the TMP.1.8.1, that's our temperature sensor. Where's that one? Is that our, yeah, that's our monitoring system. Temperature sensor failure is now the biggest cost. Let's take a look at that one. Continue this process. The reason for that is because when it fails, there's a fire, a major loss of production, and a chance of an explosion. Again, it's an exponential distribution. It happens fairly frequently. So again, maybe we should do that same thing. What if we put in some sort of protection system against this? So again, I have another redesigned file. Let me open up that other redesign. Um, oh, I have the project comparison. Let me just show what I did to that temperature sensor. So I've, again, 
attractive redesign cost for some capital expenditure, it, uh, what I did is I, again, set a redundancy factor. I put in a second temperature sensor. So the way I did this one, so I said, what if we had a redundancy? We could add in two set temperature sensors so they both have to fail. What I did is I went to the strategy tab, ran the simulations, and found the unavailability, the mean unavailability of the temperature sensor is 0 0.1038. So I said, okay, if we have two of them, when this one fails, there's only a 10% chance that the other one will be failed as well. So there's only a 10% chance, thereabouts, of the uh, effects occurring. So that's what I used for the redundancy factor, was the unavailability of a single temperature sensor. So when one temperature sensor fails, there's a 10% chance of the other one failing. Now, I didn't really properly account for this. I should set a quantity of two. I don't think I set that. Um, there's probably, again, because it would double the maintenance costs. It would double, uh, I might need to uh, set a redesign cost rate as well. So I haven't really properly taken into account all the costs associated with actually adding a second component. I've just done the redesign costs. But again, uh, we see a similar change. If you look at our contribution plot, again, the temperature sensor TMP.1.A.1 has moved all the way down to now the fifth biggest, down from first. And again, we get the same thing. To see the, um, what's the valve? Let me uh, clear off the uh, libraries and attach all three scenarios as libraries. Attach library one and attach library two. That way, we, again, we can use our project comparison plot to compare these three different scenarios. This is our initial. And then by adding in some redesign costs, this is the um, second one, this is the third one. And you can see by, by doing these redesigns, we're lowering our, our overall effect costs and improving the, by, you know, by making these capital expenditures. Anyway, so I guess uh, I hope that what you get the feel for for how you can modify the project to see, you know, I can change this. If I put in an additional cost here for my capital expenditure, that allows me to make some other change over here, an estimate of what I could save, uh, how my reliability would be improved, save it as a different model, and then I can compare the results from different models. Okay, Jeremy, any uh, any final questions? No, that looks pretty good. Thanks for putting together those um, com comparison models. Sure, okay. And again, I've sort of, um, keep in mind, all these examples are sort of uh, doctored, I guess you'd say in a way, uh, to show the uh, the improvements that we get from planning ahead and foresight. Again, you don't always expect this in, in your um, models. Sometimes the capital expenditure might be prohibitively expensive. Sure, we could add in another valve or another temperature sensor, but the cost of that might be more than it's worth. Either way, I've, I've made all these and entered all the values so that it will look like it's worthwhile. Either way, the software will give you the, um, the data you need. It will give you the output you need to justify your, your business decision. All right, great. Thanks, Joe. Uh, just to end up here, I'll be, um, as I mentioned early, I'll be earlier, I'll be posting this webinar to our blog. If any of you have any questions or requests for future webinars, please let me know. There was a request that came in to take a closer look at the buffer models, but that would probably be a webinar in and of itself, right, Joe? Um, yeah, well, again, it, it would fit into capital expenditures. You could say I could put in a, uh, a buffer, uh, like a storage tank or something like that. It goes along with this, but you know the ex actual mechanics of the buffer model might be for another webinar. Okay, yeah, so that might be something we'll be doing in the future here. But uh, thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.